The phone in your pocket is a tracking device. You can assume that it's always listening, always watching, and always following you. That's not sensational, and that's not a conspiracy. Because every time you're connected to a network, it's tracking you in some way. But so what? Everyone uses phones now and shares pretty much everything online. People say, all my information is already out there and I have nothing to hide. Edward Snowden said, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. That's no different than saying, you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. It's an antisocial argument. If someone is determined to do you harm with a few stolen passwords, they can get into your bank ruin your reputation if your social media accounts get into the wrong hands, and even find out where you live and what you do on a daily basis. But beyond the big, scary reasons for privacy, our data is also getting gathered up and used to feed ads to us, and ultimately to try to make us anxious and insecure so that we buy more crap we don't need. So I'm always looking for easy to implement ways to just not be vulnerable. So how can we do that? Well, the biggest privacy and security vulnerability we all have is this thing right here. Enter Graphene OS. It's a privacy focused Android operating system that makes your phone feel like something you actually own. Graphene only runs on newer Pixel devices and is something that you have to download and install from Graphene OS's website. It's completely free and open source, and it's something you can download in an afternoon. But before I switched to Graphene, I had some major doubts about it. Like, is it gonna make the phone camera not look as good? Will some of my apps not work anymore? Is it gonna work at all for my particular needs? In this video, I'll address those concerns as well as what I like and dislike after running Graphene OS on a Pixel 7 Pro for over a year now. The first doubt I had about graphene was the camera. One of the main reasons people get Pixel phones is for the cameras on these things. They're amazing. And one of the things that makes these cameras so good is the Google software. So when you get away from that, you lose one of the major benefits of this phone. And that's true. The camera app that comes with graphene is not that good. The photos are less sharp and colorful, and weird things happen with the lighting. However, there is an easy workaround. First of all, you can still download the Google Camera app, which I did. And then when you do that, you've still got all the benefits of the Google software. However, if you're a purist and you want to get completely off of the Google ecosystem, then you can download third-party apps, and there's tons of good free and paid ones available that are as good or better than Google's. The second concern that I was reading about was that some apps won't work on Graphene. And again, that's true. There are three banking apps I used to use that do not work at all on Graphene. I can download them, but then I press to open them and nothing happens. And the reason for that is that some banking apps, banking apps in particular, but other apps too, have extra security features that don't play well with Graphene. And like I said, you can download them from the Play Store, but then they just refuse to open. But that wasn't a deal breaker either because I just accessed those apps from the browser, which is better anyway. And my third concern with Graphene was that I worried it wouldn't support dual SIM properly. I'm living outside of my home country, so it was important to me that the dual SIM functionality works so that I could keep my home country phone number and have a number in the country where I'm a resident. And people weren't talking about this online. I couldn't find any videos or articles or chats and forums about people talking, doing this, but the setup was identical to any other Android dual SIM installation. It's the same as what I did when I was still in my home country. And it's worked perfectly for the past year. So dual SIM, no problem. Things I like about Graphene. The first big benefit of switching to Graphene was that it freed up storage space on my phone. Now I don't have exact numbers because I didn't note it down when I switched, but I asked ChatGPT 
Tell me what the difference is between the Google Pixel Android OS compared to the Graphene OS. And it said the Google Pixel Android OS and its included apps take up about 12 to 15 gigabytes. So out of the box, my phone storage was like 10% full just with the OS. Graphene OS, on the other hand, only comes with 14 very minimal apps, and it takes up just around three gigabytes for the OS. So it's super lightweight and minimal. The next benefit is my battery life went up by a lot. Again, I don't have exact numbers here because I wasn't tracking it when I was on Google Android, but anecdotally, what I can tell you is my phone would often be out of battery at the end of the day because Google is constantly phoning home. It's sharing your location and there's all these trackers and things Google is running at all times in the background that's draining your battery. That doesn't happen anymore with graphene. I end my days with 50 to 70% of battery most days and it rarely overheats anymore. So if I had to put a number on it, I'd say the battery life got 30 to 50% better by switching to graphene. The next thing I like is the control you get. When you go into app settings, you have way more granular control to set app permissions. And when you first download an app, a box pops up asking if you want to allow the app network control. So you could deny it and just use it as an offline app and not share any info at all with the developer. Of course, that would render most modern apps, most apps that people use useless because you need to be able to log in, but at least you can do that if you want. You can, you can isolate it from the network. The next thing I like with Graphene is that you can set up separate profiles. These are separate sandbox profiles for things like banking, social media, or whatever else you want to isolate from your main usage experience. I know some people who have a profile just for Google apps, where they put all their Google apps in a profile or just one for Uber, for example, just like whatever's gonna be tracking them, they put those in separate sandbox locations. Aside from making sure that those apps aren't monitoring what you're doing in other apps, it's also another security step. So if your phone got stolen and they got into your main profile, you could set up a separate pin code or biometric login to access, for example, your banking profile where all your sensitive financial information is and they're not gonna be able to get into there. It's one extra step beyond getting into your main, main profile that you normally use. The next thing I like is that it has frequent and automatic updates. I know most people hate updates and dread them. Personally, I like them because I love getting the latest features when they drop or it feels like getting a new device when suddenly there's a new button or a new feature, a new capability. Graphene OS seems to update several times per month and it does it automatically, actually automatically. With Google and any other OS, you can set it to automatic updates, but it never seems to actually do it until a few days after it's been released, the, the, the latest OS, and they only release one per month. So there's several times per month where I go to turn on my phone and it says, enter a passcode, a new update has been installed on your phone. So I just like knowing I have the latest security patches, the latest features and all that as they come out. Lastly, I just like the principle of Graphene. I'm a huge fan of simple, free, and open source software like this. The paradox of digital privacy and security is that the more intense you go with it, the more complexity it introduces and the more it tends to cost as well. But I think switching to graphene is a low friction way to increase your digital security. Now, things that I don't like about graphene. The biggest daily annoyance for me is that Google Maps has issues I didn't have before switching to Graphene. When I'm on Wi-Fi, it won't work at all. I type in a direction, it just won't load it. The app is, is almost useless on Wi-Fi. If I'm on cellular data, it usually works, but there's still a lot of times where it won't load while my wife's phone, which is also a Google Pixel phone, but with Pixel OS, Hers works perfectly every single time. It's fast, it's reliable. And that sometimes spills over into other location-dependent apps like Uber. A common problem I have is 
with Uber is my location won't update for a few hours. So it thinks I'm somewhere other than where I currently am and weird stuff like that happens. And I'm sure there's a degree of user error there. And I know that you're going to roast me in the comments for, Oh, you forgot to turn on this setting or do this thing. The next problem I had with graphene was when I first switched to graphene, it was the day Android 14 was released. And like with all OSs, it had a bunch of bugs right at the beginning. You know, things like not being able to close an app or apps just freezing up on me. But those little things got cleaned up pretty quickly. And I've had very little issues or bugs since that first month or so. But it was pretty annoying and I, I almost gave up on graphene because I had a lot of little just minor nuisances like that. But again, I think that was more of a brand new Android 14 problem versus graphene specifically. If I was on Samsung or Google, they were probably having the same issues. And with that said, I just installed Android 15 a couple weeks ago when it came out. So if you want to see a video about that, let me know in the comments. The last thing I don't like about graphene is that you can't take advantage of all of Google's AI features like photo editing and autocorrect and Gemini and all that stuff, which obviously if you're using graphene, you're doing it to get away from Google. But as a nerd, I have to admit, I do love and miss the Google tech. And to be clear, you can still download any Google app, but they're just not going to be deeply integrated and work as well as they do on Pixel OS. For example, my Google Maps experience that I told you about. But the main takeaway is it's Android, but security focused. It helps you get out of the Google ecosystem. Speaking of getting out of the Google ecosystem, if you are tired of using Google Analytics, check out this video next that I did about a privacy respecting analytics app.